Hey, hey, all you Arizona lovers, this is the Finding Arizona podcast, episode number 408. I'm your host, Jose. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Today's episode is actually a good one. I'm so excited to share with you Access ASU as a fellow uh, graduate. I don't even know, like my alma mater ASU. It's just really wonderful. I got a chance to speak to a part of uh, ASU and just wanting to share how someone is going to be able to access uh, someone who is behind the scenes helping out other students and allowing some encouragement to continue secondary education. And it is wonderful that we even got to talk to Vanessa Ruiz, who is a former anchor of the Arizona Valley and it's just so great that someone of her status chose education after her career in uh, news and broadcasting that it is just kind of like one of those really monumental moments for me just to have someone of her status and her background and also just to have someone who's also an ASU graduate we got to share a lot of wonderful moments But on top of everything else, we got to experience what it's like for her and growing up. She has a really wonderful and vibrant backstory that we get into. And I just want to share with you, like, if you guys are encouraged by any of these stories, please click the links in the bios below. We always try and make sure that you guys are keeping up to date and staying in touch with these individual stories so that you guys can go out and seek them and seek the individual themselves and stay connected with them. And that just being said let's just jump into a little bit of the business side you can hear every episode of our podcast at finding arizona podcast.com make it easy for you guys to connect with us through social media finding arizona podcast is the name under everything and last but not least email finding arizona podcast at gmail.com send us who you want in next and we'll try and make that happen Behind the scenes, Mother's Day was a wonderful success for both my wife and my actual mother. We got to do something with each of them, on top of which we were honored to uh, say that we got best podcast through the Arizona Foothills magazine. So if you check out those latest issues from Arizona Foothills, you'll see a Brit and I's photo in there. Uh, we were very you know, humbled and you know, just encouraged by those of you listening that you still think of us and you still want us to be a part of the community. And that is just a pat on the back for us. But we're going to keep on going, keep on chugging, making sure this train is a flow going down the track, making sure we get every story we possibly can and share that in the best possible manner. Uh, Just again, behind the scenes. Also, we're we're moving along. We got some great stories. We're going to be doing some live events coming this summer. So stay in touch with our social media to find out where you can find us. Uh, Just a shout out to Tony and 602 Day. Very excited for that one. And then uh, last but not least, if you want to use us as a service uh, and you want to be your own podcast or you want to put out your own content whatever it may be find us under our service arm it's called the found house we want to show that we have the ability to share your story on the best platforms best possible manner and that is through working with us and we will try and make sure that you guys get the best content out there for your brand and that is called the found house so hopefully we get to work together i'm very excited and that just concludes everything that we got going on so i will catch you on the next episode stay stay hydrated out there it is getting warmer we're hitting the triple digits here in the valley but for those of you who are not in the valley just again stay hydrated it's uh, it'll it'll creep up on you the summer months uh let's just get into this episode episode number 408 with access asu and vanessa ruiz we will see you on the next one catch you later Score big with SeatGeek. Whether it's concerts, sports, or live events, SeatGeek has you covered. Use code FINDINGARIZONA to get a fantastic $20 discount on your SeatGeek tickets. Catch your favorite live events hassle-free with extra savings. Visit SeatGeek.com and make every experience unforgettable. Welcome back, everybody, to the Finding Arizona podcast. I'm your host, Jose, and as always, we bring in fantastic guests every week, and today is no different. I would love to introduce Vanessa here, and I'm very excited because today we are on the downtown ASU campus, my former alma mater, and uh, I just am very excited to get into this conversation with Vanessa here, but I'm going to let Vanessa take the reins right now, 
and introduce herself and her department and what we're going to be at least discussing for a part of this podcast. Sure. Thank you, Jose. And thank you so much again for having me on your podcast. My name is Vanessa Ruiz, and I have the distinct pleasure of serving as Deputy Vice President for Educational Outreach um, within Educational Outreach and Student Services. Sometimes our team is also known as Access ASU. And I think the name, right, is created with intention. It really does mean accessing ASU specifically for our Arizona students and in many ways their families, right? Because going to college, we know, is not just a typically a solo project, yes. right? It really does take the support and the wrapping around of that family or caretakers um, around that student to make it to college successfully, especially if that student um, is the first one, right, in yeah. their family to do it. And so what we do here, we do a lot. We have programming, we have resources, we have engagement opportunities, we have events where, again, Arizona students and families who are currently in K-12, right, from all over our state, we work with, you know, typically it could be anywhere uh, over 100,000 students and families per year all yeah. across our state. Um, to start to create that college readiness, that college preparedness, that college mindset, so many of our communities, right, that we work with, that we serve with, um, unfortunately, we see it all the time by eighth, ninth grade, a family has made the decision that, you know what, college just isn't for us. Mm -hmm. Whether it's because there are considerations that have to do with finances, which is very real, mm -hmm. of course, and we address that, um, to we don't even know where to begin, right? Like, yeah. who, do you, who do you talk to? What do you fill this application out? The fear of taking the leap. All of these things, right? And so we are here to walk through every single step alongside the student and the family yeah. to show them, actually, no, here's how you start to prepare. Here are the things that you need to do. And part of what we do also, Jose, is, again, that family engagement, right? Um, where we really work side to side with our families, with our familias, to empower them, to make sure that they become their students, their child's best advocate. Um, toward successful post-secondary. And also, if you're a family, say, for example, if you're an immigrant family mm -hmm. and you're not really familiar with the way that our school system works, it can be very intimidating, Absolutely. right? At, if you don't speak the language, yep. right? How do you communicate with your student's teacher, with your student's counselor? And so instead of making those barriers um, stay put. Mm -hmm. Again, we work with the families to remove those barriers and to, again, make them feel confident and actively engaged in the success yeah. of their students' educational journey. Wow, that's... I mean, a very long answer. No, 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 you're absolutely <laughs> fine because that is something that is very important to let everyone know and, and just try and take in that understanding of what you are, what you do and what, the, what your program does. But on top of that, I mean, there's so much more to you, the individual that I'd love to to start off with, just as a kind of entree for everyone to really enjoy and take in and take a bite, because I, you know, I was doing research on you and and just your background is very beautiful and just oh. your story in general. That's how you how you and your family um, moved around and how you came to just being the person that you are. I'd love everyone to help. Uh, oh boy, tell you tell. Tell us a little bit of your origin story. I know for one fact that you are former anchors. Um, and I think I have seen a couple of, you know, you uh, doing some news broadcasts, but I didn't want to be like, Ugh, like this is a professional journalism person <laughs> and a podcaster. And I'm just like, I want to be on my best behavior and ask the right questions. But I also want people to understand because you have a wonderful story that goes along with being here today. So oh, yeah, also a little bit of the origins, like you're originally a Florida girl, right? I am a Florida girl. Yes. 305 till I die. <laughs> so, well, thank you for that. Yeah. Um, let's see. I was born in Miami, Florida. My whole family, though, is from Colombia. Yes. Right. And so I was raised by a very strong, determined single mother who came to the United States when she was 18, like so many of the stories, right, that we know in our communities to work hard to help support her family back home. Yeah. And so when I came around, um, my mother still had to work to support the family. And so it made sense to have me live with my grandparents, mm -hmm. with my abuelo and my abuela back in Colombia. 
So I was born in Miami and I was raised in Colombia by my grandparents from the age of zero to five. Mm. At five, I started to move around. So I had family that had moved to Spain. Yes. And so I spent some time with them in Spain then. Then I came back to Miami for a few years, went back to Spain, did second and third grade, parts of my second and third grade in Spain, and then came back to Miami until I was 15. Okay. And then at 15, right, that summer between freshman and sophomore year of high school, I went back to Spain wow. and did my sophomore, junior, and senior year of high school there. Yeah. Um, graduated, did not want to come back to the States uh, <laughs> after three years of living in Spain, but my mom said, no, you have to come back. Because thankfully, even though my mother, unfortunately, she herself never had the opportunity to go to college. Yeah. She actually planned ahead. And so she did what, oh. for example, nowadays, if you're familiar with a 529 plan, I don't know if you know what that is. No, actually, I don't. So it's basically, it could be an account. Um, it could be a, a program where you start to pay for your child's college education month to month yeah. early. Yeah. Okay. So if you, ha- if you haven't done that for your <laughs> three-year-old, please do it. Because yeah, we've absolutely. done it for my two daughters. They're also three and five years old. And yeah. every month it's like, Forty dollars that we put away, and so it calculates the amount of theoretically what the college will be when they graduate high school. Yeah. So by the time they do graduate, you pretty much have it all paid off. Sweet. Anyway, yeah, yeah. So my mom did that wow. in Florida, and so awesome. in the Florida program, uh, it allowed you to go to any state school. Yeah, and so that's that's ultimately what I did. I did something very unusual. I left home when I was nineteen. Okay. Which again, that's not typically something you see, especially among Latino families. Yeah. But because I did become independent so early, I had to work full time. Mm. And so I did the whole working full time, going to school thing. Yeah. I was on the extended plan at college, is what <laughs> yeah. I call it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I didn't graduate in four years. That was not realistic not for me. Not feasible, yeah. Um, but, you know, I always had that voice of my mom in the back of my head. I, I always heard her saying, you know, Miha, the only thing that they will never be able to take away from. That's what my dad said. You know, I think they all read from the same script. Yeah. You know, they have the same. They all have that same book. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, it stuck back in there. Yeah. Even though I had many times, trust me, when I wanted to quit. Yeah. Uh, you know, Absolutely. I was just like, this is too hard. I can't keep doing this. Yeah. Um, her encouragement, her motivation, and frankly, her grit. Her, mm-hmm. you know, she is probably the hardest working person I've ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. And so my, I know my work ethic and my integrity and my uh, values and why I do what I do is really because of what I saw with her growing up. Yeah. Um, and it, all that to say, I pushed through and was able to finish my degree. And I'm so glad that I did. Yeah. Um, so then in the midst of all that, 17 years as a journalist, uh, the first 14 of those in my whole market of Miami, Florida. So really active, you know, market, all kinds of crazy political stories, breaking news, hurricanes, yeah. you name it. Um, and then after 14 years, I said, you know, I'm ready for the next step. And then I transitioned and I moved to Los Angeles. Okay. And I was actually there for a year and three months, much less than I anticipated when I got a call one day out of the blue and it was my agent. I had an agent at the time. <laughs> yeah. You have sometimes in the business. And they said, you know, there's going to be a anchor opportunity opening up in Phoenix, Arizona, is that something that would interest you? And I said, sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it kind of fell into my professional plan and the things that I wanted to do. Frankly, never really thinking that it was going to work out or pan out. I had so many other interviews throughout my career that ended up not really working out. And this one did. Um, I I got the job and I want to say not even a month later, I found myself driving the six hours from Los Angeles to Phoenix Sight unseen. Wow. Definitely. Wow. What I mean, year was this? This was in 2015. Okay. This okay. was in July of 2015. And it was just my, my dog and I <laughs> in the car. And I'll never forget it. I opened the, the car door. It was 10 o'clock at night when I got here. Yeah. And I thought, oh my goodness. What is this? Like, you know, it's <laughs> July. So think about that, right? Yeah. I was like, "What? What is going on?" You pulled your door open to 105 was, degrees I at the middle of the like night. A cool 98 okay, degrees, okay. and I was 10, and I thought, "Wow, okay, 
you know, Toto, we're not in Kansas anymore. Yeah. Um, and then unbeknownst to me, probably the most unexpected, um, challenging, rewarding chapter of both my personal and professional life was about to be. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I could, I could understand <laughs> all of that. That is something incredible. And that's why I wanted you to explain a little bit, like understand that part of it, because we could pull away from all of that story. Uh, so many things. One, your determination, your grit, your family, everything. But I'd also like to just pinpoint one, like you've seen and where you are today in this education world, you've seen the American side, the yeah. U.S. you know uh, education system, and you've seen the European and Spain yeah. side, and just you've had that understanding and scope of like what each of them brings, both positively and negatively. Mm-hmm. And you can allow yourself and what you've been through to help generate ideas, help generate new um, events, everything in between to help promote and bring light to these people who want to go to secondary education and allow that success rate to increase. Absolutely. So that was one thing that I, I kind of pinpointed on, but I, it's just really funny that you have this very unique. So just again, it's like your family and how it means so much to you to want to continue onward with the understanding that, your education they can't take that away from you now yeah. and that's so beautiful that that has been a a kind of cornerstone to who you are and now you're in this post-secondary education world how much of you know your mom do you really see in yourself today in this position uh, again i think to answer that question I, the determination yeah the 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 commitment to helping others Mm -hmm. for example you know i transitioned so i moved as i said i moved to phoenix at the time for a job in in journalism and i was with that company for two years and then i transitioned into higher ed Mm -hmm. and even now it's been seven years since i transitioned people still ask me why why did you leave the world of journalism and and broadcast you know you had a great job and you had this career, why would you transition into higher education? And, you know, my answer is still very much the same, which is when I was a, a journalist, I really, part of what I did was because I had a commitment to the community. I wanted the yeah. stories that typically are not heard absolutely to be heard. And so with higher education, I, I really believe this, that for those of us who we've had that opportunity, right? We, we were able to go to college. We were able to get an education. That education helped us get to that next level, right? Um, Not just for ourselves, but for our families. I I believe in paying that forward. Absolutely. I believe that others are just as deserving uh, of an opportunity um, of access. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in Arizona, it can be complicated, right? It can be complicated, especially when we think about how much money is spent per student in the K-12 system, Mm -hmm. the disparate districts, Right. Um, the resources that public education has and doesn't have in the state of Arizona. And so there's brilliance in every single household. Yeah. It's just a matter of tapping into that brilliance and really making that student, that family believe and understand that, hey, if you have a curiosity, if you have a desire, if, if you want to go to college, but you just don't know how to do that, that's why we're here. Um, yeah. Because you can change someone's life. We change my team. I'm telling you every day I hear the stories. I have my, my, my team come to me and say, you know, I cried today at a school because of what a student said to me. They're changing lives yeah. every single yeah. day by removing Absolutely. barriers and taking these students step by step and saying, no, you can do this. Yeah. And let's gonna, let's show you how. Yeah. To me, you can't, you can't think of a, of a more fulfilling, worthwhile, uh, way to make a living absolutely just the i mean for me it would be just the stories alone would feed my soul every day and just allow me to walk away and be like hey look i did something great today and i think that you have something truly beautiful that not only feeds your soul and just be able to help the people on your team as well and so i'd love to just understand also just give us because i you know i'm 
far, I say far, but I, I, it's been a while since I was in school. <laughs> um, I'd love to help the individuals listening understand some of the events and services sure. and things like that yes. that they can come to you for. Sure, sure. So we are a 100 plus team uh, strong. So again, we have um, a mighty army, as I like to say, of individuals who are committed and passionate about this work. Many of us, again, first generation college students. Yeah. So we, we've lived it and we know what it takes. And especially nowadays, right, when there is so much conversation around, you know, the value of, of a college education. And so I always talk about, well, there's how much it costs and then there's a the value. Yeah. And to me, those are two very separate things, mm -hmm. right? So let's really address more of the logistical components of like, how much is it going to cost? Yeah. Because for our families, typically that's the number one barrier. How are we going to pay for this, right? And so the, again, the earlier we prepare, the better positioned you'll be to make sure that you have the financial ability to go to college. But in terms of resources and support, again, the list is long. Uh, we have summer programs. We are embedded in the schools all across the state, primarily urban Phoenix, yeah. um, northwest, south, east, um, working with students, working with educators, working with parents, um, you name it. Now, one thing I do want to highlight is, again, our family engagement. And that actually focuses on two primary programs. One currently is called We Grad. So it's a little bit of a play on the we graduate yeah. together um, sentence, if you will. It used to be called American Dream Academy, and a lot of people mm -hmm. knew it by that name. Yeah, It's been around since 2006, yeah. and it has worked to this day with thousands of families. And typically, it's been done in partnership with school districts. Mm -hmm. So we invite the families to come once a week, typically for an eight-week in-person program. And we teach them all the things right? All the things that I mentioned just a few minutes ago. Um, what is a FAFSA, right? What's the federal aid mm -hmm. form? How do you fill that out? Um, you know, what are the classes that your child needs to make sure they're taking in high school? Not just so that they can graduate high school, but that they can be admitted into the university, right? Uh, what's the GPA they need, the extracurriculars? Uh, but not just in the high school space. We also work with families while in middle school and elementary. Oh, that's great. And you may wonder, wow, that's kind of early, right? Yeah. To start talking about something like college. Never too early. Never too, Never too my, early. So I, I, I will just step it. My, my own story is like my mom, I grew up on the reservation. But before that, I was actually in the East Coast in Pennsylvania. And that's where we spent a very large chunk of our lives. And my mother knew that she, she knew that I was going to go to school, to college. And she was just like, she tried her best to save up and she did, would love to have learned about the five two yeah, the, the, the five twenty nine five twenty nine plan. plan. Yep. Um, but she, all she knew was that the tribe would help me mm -hmm. with college, but I'd have to be in the school program okay. and then graduate from their high school. And so we moved back one particular part because of that, but because of my family and her parents were um, retiring and mm -hmm. they wanted to be closer with the grandkids and we were the one only part of the family that wasn't around so they wanted to see us more and so that she just like, flew back and, and that was really beautiful because my brother and I got to learn our culture but also I had an opportunity so he to become understanding of like secondary school like oh, college and yeah. what kind of opportunities they were and so I was very thankful after a long period of time of like you moved me away from this one place that I only knew of but now I'm here and so it took a while but that being said it was very like it's a pivotal moment in my life to like really start understanding education is important and you know what you do after high school things like that so what I want to do in my life and what I want to do with my life and I'm very thankful to that but I also say that to say I just was really thrown aback about like that, those opportunities yeah. of how you can afford it and things like that. And I, I wouldn't be able to without my mom thinking prior ahead and like, my son's going to do this. Here's how I can help him by, by providing him this opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very thankful to her to this day. And now she is actually an ASU student on their online program. And uh, she is, 
very much a, an elder statesman uh, in the groups that she's going to school with, but she she never finished her secondary education. She saw me finish mine, okay. uh, get my master's degree. And she's like, my son can do it. My younger son can do it. I want to be able to to get yeah. my, my bachelor's degree. And so You inspired her. Yeah. It's much. amazing. Yeah. And you know, that's such a perfect segue into Hispanic Mother Daughter Program. Absolutely. Because that's the other program, right, that we work with in terms of families in our state. And just like the name said, Hispanic Mother Daughter Program. So this program actually this year is its 40th anniversary. Wow. Four zero. Wow. Because back in 1984, as you can imagine, there just wasn't a lot of yeah. Latina, Latino representation in higher ed, right? Mm-hmm. And so ASU wanted to do something about that. Mm-hmm. And it started this program where at the time, uh, young Latinas would start uh, in the program and it starts in eighth grade mm-hmm. doing it alongside their mothers and and the goal was to get of course that young latina to graduate go to college but that in the process it would also inspire the mother yeah to get her degree to start her own educational journey yeah and it did that and it did that so successfully with these teens of mothers and daughters for so many years that while the name remains the same, Hispanic yeah. Mother Daughter Program, now we accept fathers, we accept brothers. And so now it's really a family unit, yeah. right? That does this program together. And it's a five year commitment, wow. right? From yeah. eighth grade all the way through their senior year of high school. But we've had over 2,000 teens of mothers, daughters, families, et cetera, graduate together. Yeah. And we're, we're so proud of that, right? Um, again, you inspired your mother mm-hmm. with your own journey. And we see it happening now still time and time and time again with these amazing groups of families mm-hmm. where it's never too late. It's never That's too never, late. I will never. tell you, you know, mm-hmm. I, again, I was in the journalism business for 17 years. And trust me, that kept me plenty busy. Um, I got my master's degree just a month shy of turning 40. Okay. Yeah. So again, never too late. Yes. I never thought that a master's degree was something that I would pursue. Same. <laughs> but here we are, right? And so one, it's never too late. Two, you do need at least some kind of a support system. Absolutely. Right? 100%. To get you through those hard times. Yep. And um, she was actually the one that I called the most and <laughs> leaned on the most. And she was definitely the support system that you I You need it. Yeah. You need it. I'm I'm very like so the things that you're bringing to the table here especially with these programs is this longevity of like connection with these families mm-hmm. and I don't I mean I I'm just imagining like you must have so many like what you would probably call your family with these stories of like individuals who succeeded in these programs and just have these wonderful stories with these teens and adults now and just yeah. like going through the years with Absolutely. I will tell you, every time I need an injection of motivation, I go to one of our we grad graduations. Nice. Because that's the culmination, right, of not just the student, but also the parent. Mm-hmm. They've made a commitment. They stuck through it. They were there every single session supporting their child. And you should see these parents. You should see these families. Yeah. When they get that certificate of completion, it it. In some of them, it's like if they just graduated college. Yeah. And it's so it's such a beautiful thing to see. But I will say, Jose, the team, the family's team, and we're actually here in their bit in their yeah. um, office. So this is where the family's team works from okay. in downtown. They're the real heroes. They're the ones that are really out there every single day, not just teaching, engaging the families, but to your point, building and fostering those relationships. I can't tell you how many times we've had students graduate high school, come to ASU, they continue to find support yeah. in this office, even though technically they graduated from the program, but they know that this is a place that they can come back to and talk to someone, get yeah. the help that they need. And many times, even after graduation from ASU, they stay in touch. And I think that's a true testament to the amazing work and the amazing people that are part of this team. Yeah. So, uh, I- you know, we've talked about your early beginnings. We've we've gone over some of the services and, and programs that you guys do offer. Towards the end of our conversation, and we're reaching towards that end, and I'd like to just transfer more towards, you know, one part you as a daily task 
manager and just like how you because your mother you're a, a business person and you uh, you hold a team of 100 i want to know like balance in your life like how i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> i mean at least what what you know <laughs> things that you like to do when you're not you know dealing with you know, the severity of some of the, the things that you have to do issue wise with um you know helping these students and making sure that they succeed with what they do but you know your family life and yeah. how, how that all manages in and also i'd love to understand like your kids, like, are you looking for them to grad- like join ASC or are you just like, I just hope they go somewhere then and succeed on their own? <laughs> well, I think any parent, right? At least for me, I, I want to make sure that my, my kids do what makes them happy, mm-hmm. right? But I think part of being a parent is also preparing your children for life yeah. after they're gone from the house. And so I don't know what our reality will look like in 15 years um or 14 years when my first daughter goes off to college but but i will say i I certainly want them to have access to all of the opportunities that are out there right you always want the best for your children to answer your original question balance um so i am a firm believer that i think it's important to be very honest and truthful here Mm -hmm. because i get this question a lot how do you do it How, how do you manage such a demanding career uh, you know, so many responsibilities at work and you have two young children to have, as I shared, a three-year-old daughter and a five-year-old daughter, right? And my answer is, I, one, I honestly don't know how I do it. <laughs> um, and two, there is no secret sauce. Um, it's hard. Mm-hmm. It is really hard yeah. um, to balance it, to balance. And I don't even know if that's a, a real thing, balance. You you just do it in a way that you, the best that you can. Mm-hmm. I will say I have a fantastic husband, a partner. We're a true partnership. Mm-hmm. Um, we both work full time, but we also do it together, yeah. right? And we help each other out. There's really no other way I yeah. could do this. My family does not live here. Yeah. Um, so I don't have that support system here, unfortunately. We pay, as I said, too much money when it comes to um, after school and aftercare and all of those things. Because unfortunately, while we have told women for so many years, and I'm the first one to raise my hand, that I wholeheartedly uh, believe it, that yeah, you can do anything and you can go into the workplace and you can pursue all of your professional goals and dreams. And that's amazing. And we're doing it in a system that was not set up to support working mothers. Yeah. And so that is a major point of contention. Mm-hmm. Um, that I think we as a country, uh, as a society, as communities really need to figure out. You still get me started on this topic. <laughs> we are we'll going to go down it. a rabbit hole. Yes. Um, so really to be succinct, just I do it because I have a great partner. Mm-hmm. I also can try to navigate a little better because I actually work with individuals that understand that people have lives outside of their job. Mm-hmm. And so if things come up, especially with kids, like it's okay and you take care of what you have to take care of. And the last thing I'll say um, is I now as a leader lead or try to lead through example. Yeah. Right. Meaning I want to create the kind of environment where women, people, anybody feels like, hey, they can come and say, hey, I've had this happen to me. I need to take care of it. Like, again, just having that understanding and flexibility that um, people are, are more than just what they do mm-hmm. in their job, but yeah. that they come with a whole set of things behind them. And I also think that that's the only way that you attract and you keep good talent. Yeah. And especially women, because I don't want to see brilliant, talented women exiting the workforce because they have no other options, yeah. right? In terms of childcare, et cetera. So that's what I try to do in terms of being a leader, leading through example. I do my best. Um, you know, I try to do one thing at a time. Absolutely. And when I am with my children, I am with my children. Absolutely. I put the phone away. I'm not on my phone. I'll, I'll answer emails and calls after they go to bed. I want them to see a mother who is present with them okay. when I am spending time with them. It's the same. It's, it's, it, it's the same thing that I kind of told myself when our son was born that he, he was you know, we were going to split up time between what we do for a living, this podcast, and just really make the delineation of like present parenthood. You know, mm-hmm. we really want him to understand that he is loved 
he is going to be taken care of. And that was the very big uh, priority in our lives as soon as we realized we were going to have him. And so I, I fully agree with the partnership. Um, communication is a very big thing for us. And I can only imagine you being a journalist and, and, and a <laughs> former anchor, just like how much communication you have with your partner. And so I really do appreciate you, yeah. know, you giving us a little bit of who you are and, and what you're about. But I think it says a lot about who's in charge of the company or who's in charge of the, the program and who's a leader in this program. It shows that you really want to bring that culture along with what you guys do. And so 100%. that is going to be our little end here. But I do like to end finally with everything to be looking towards goals and what you guys were hoping to achieve, not only maybe just in the next year, but just overall for you as a as a uh, leader of this group and a you know, vice president, um, I'd love to understand just maybe one goal that you have for for what you guys do. Sure. I would say if I had to pick one goal, it would be to have more Arizona students and families know about Access ASU and that we exist and that we do this work and we do this work to serve. We do this work to provide that opportunity for access to individuals that may otherwise not have that access. And so join us if it's something that you're interested in. Come with us. We're here to help. Um, we do a lot. And so I guarantee you, if you're in that K-12 place, um, there's something for everyone. Um, a lot of what we do, we do it in English and Spanish, Thanks. right? Because I think that's important, too, for our families here in Arizona. 50% of our K-12 students are Latino, Hispanic students mm -hmm. currently. Yep. And that number is only expected to grow. Mm -hmm. So that's my, my, my goal, that we work with and we serve even more students and families so that they have the opportunity for a better future. Thank you so much. And uh, the last bit I give to you, <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, is just always give us a little bit of the promotional site where they can find sure. you online, uh, website, email, anything. In Thank between. you. Go ahead, Easy on. breezy. Easy breezy. I always say Google access ASU, comma, ASU. Um, and then our website will come up and then you'll see, again, all of our programs. You'll learn how you can get involved or if you want to contact someone. Again, we have people here that will pick up the phone in English and Spanish. Yes important um so yes that's that's my that's my 10 second spiel yeah. so join us absolutely and before we go we always have our little end piece here you can listen to every episode of our podcast at fighting arizona podcast at top social media wise fighting arizona podcast under everything last but not least we always say kisses hugs and belly rubs to our four-legged friends and we will see you next time bye <laughs>